It's the Daily Doug. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Daily Doug. I am happy that you're here today. Today I am at the piano. I'm over at the church where I work as the minister of music. And I, uh, I'm over here because um, I recently was asked uh, a question about music that I have uh, answered in many of the uh, classes I've taught uh, at the college level over the past uh, decade plus. And it's, it's a really good question. And it's, it's funny how um, not many people have a real solid answer as to why. And the question is this, we have an octave, right? In this, in this case, a C to a C. Uh, why do we have 12 chromatic notes that are between that octave? Why not 10? Why not 20? Why not 40? You know, so there's a C. We've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 different pitches before you get back to, if this piano was more in tune, um, a duplication of the same pitch uh, that you started on just an octave higher. Um, <laughs> so why 12? Uh, uh, instead of anything else. Well, I think there's a real functional and scientific way to, uh, to answer that. Uh, and it couldn't have been any other way, really. Um, and to do that, let's, let's talk about uh, sound in general. Um, we make sounds, sounds occur by vibrating bodies um, at a certain frequency and that creates waves and the sound travels on air and the higher the frequency or the faster the vibration then the higher the pitch and the slower the vibration the lower the pitch right so in a case like the piano here we've got any number of these uh, strings and when I uh, play one then you not only hear that note which is almost a C <laughs> <laughs> and, but you hear other notes embedded in that because the string, uh, the entire length of the string has a vibration that happens to it. Um, but there's all sorts of sympathetic vibrations embedded within that. And those are the overtone series or the harmonic series, if you've ever heard of that before. Um, it's based on, like, if we start with the fundamental pitch, if we... Uh, for instance, would cut the string in half or double the frequency, then we would generate a pitch that's an octave higher than where we started, right? If we divided the string into thirds or, or into fourths or into, you know, in, in all these different ways, as the sympathetic vibrations go, the harmonic series gets built. And so from this fundamental, you have an octave, and then you have an octave plus a fifth. And that's interesting because it's the first um, member of the harmonic series that is not a duplication of the same pitch class of where you started. Um, so that's why the fifth becomes a major building block in our, um, in our idea of how to make music. Um, if I were to hold this C down. I saw Leonard Bernstein on YouTube uh, of, of an old uh, lecture he did do this one time. I wonder if I can get it to work. If I hold this C down and I hit the C below it hard, can you hear the higher pitch? Hear it? Right? So even though I've struck this lower pitch, I have the hammer up off of this string so it can sympathetically vibrate at the frequency uh, and build into the sound waves that are near it, right? Isn't that cool? So that's the first overtone, and you'd hear that quite well. But if I go up to the fifth, right? If I hold that one down silently and strike the C again. Hear it? I'll do it again. Except for the cars going by. <laughs> because uh, this church is very close to a major road. I also have a handbell. Uh, handbell people, uh, I'm not wearing my gloves. Apologies. Um, but this is also one of those C's. It's, it is a C4. Pretty close, right? But what I wanted to show you is on a bell, you can hear 
a lot of the harmonics that happen above it a lot more prevalently. Um, for me on this one, which is a C, I hear the G. So I'll be listening for this pitch. Okay? So as I dampen this, listen for the high pitch. You got the high pitch? Right? That's a high G that's coming through loud and clear, even though this is a C. Isn't that rad? I hope you can hear that. Um, the same thing tends to happen. This is a part of a, uh, the singing bell technique. And when we do this, we're dampening some of those overtones so they're not quite as present, so you get a more pure, sustained tone. Isn't that pretty? Versus, and you get all of those high overtones that pop through. There's more than just those. Those are just the first few. Um, if this is the fundamental, then the first overtone is the octave, the second overtone is, the, is, is a fifth, an octave and a fifth above the first pitch. And then we go up another perfect fourth to another C, right? So, and then you get a major third, and then a minor third, and then sort of seconds, and, and, on, and the higher we go, the closer these um, these uh, overtones get to each other, and that's how like brass players uh, can play scales. They're going back and forth between different fundamentals on their fingerings uh, of the um, of the, the instrument and playing different partials, different overtones, different parts of the series uh, based on on whatever the the, um, the music calls for. <sighs> All that being said, <laughs> apologies for all that, that first note that's not the duplication of, of the same fundamental pitch, the fifth, becomes the major building block of how we're going to put together mathematically uh, the way that we uh, organize and divide up the octave. So if this is our fundamental and that's the first overtone, and that's the perfect fifth. That perfect fifth, we can duplicate that um, interval. If a distance from a C is to a G, then I could do that same thing starting on G, and I can go from G and I can get up to D, right? And then I can go from D and I can go up another fifth and I can go to A, right? And then E, and then B, and so forth. And the reason why we have 12 different notes in the octave is because it takes 12 times of doing that to get back to a C. Think about it. If you're all the way down here, that's way out of tune. <laughs> but C, up to G, up to D, A, E, B, F sharp, C sharp, G sharp, or I'll call this A flat, up to E flat, up to B flat, up to F, F up to C. Now, when we do that and we get from one C to the next, that completes the circle, and that's the circle of fifths. It didn't really need to be a circle. We were just kind of doing that on a, on a, on a lateral plane. Um, but when we got the same sort of pitch class here that we started with, we can connect those and it becomes the way to organize our musical ideas. We take those, all of those different pitches that we got. We had a C, we had a G, we had a D, we had an A, we had an E, we had a B, we had an F sharp, C sharp, A flat, E flat, B flat, F, and then there you get all 12 pitches.
I think that's the main reason why we divide it into 12 different pitches. And then once we do that, that's why we get, or how we get equal temperament, and it allows for everybody to kind of have it like a MIDI interface to tuning. <laughs> and, and everybody gets to play with the same basic rules. The fun stuff is now where uh, people are getting a little bit more, and we, really this it's happened all the time uh, in history. Uh, we're uh, interested in different types of, of tuning systems, ways to tune chords, uh, uh, different ways to divide an octave. What if you had um, a scale that was, um, a, this is a chromatic scale with 12 pitches. What about a chromatic scale with 10 or with seven or with five? And, and, and how would that be weighted equally or not? And how would the music sound different, uh, differently? Um, uh, these are all just ways that we just kind of maneuver the playing field as we, uh, as we go and then assemble the parts and then just play the game and see what art gets created in, in the activities wake. Um, that's what I really consider myself, um, a, a tinkerer, a, um, uh, like, a, like I've learned a trade. Um, it, it is creative, but, it's, but so is woodworking uh, and a person is, is creating um, a chair or a table that is, you know, you know, wonderfully and masterfully created. Uh, I, uh, composing is, is, a tr is a creative trade just like that. There's um, room for a lot of individual uh, perspective, uh, but also within a framework that allows us to compare and share music uh, with our peers uh, quite freely and, and easily. So it's a wonderful time to be alive despite all the crazy crap that's going on. Uh, I hope that was interesting to you. If you'd like uh, more little lectures about this or if you have questions, let me know and I would be happy to, uh, to let you know uh, what my thoughts are on them. Uh, thanks for being with us tonight and we will see you next time on The Daily Doug.